In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down video game mechanics. Now, video game mechanics is what we say when we're talking about the gameplay characters' movement. So when you see them walk, run, the combination of their combos, their death, all of their actions that come from pressing a button, including the actions of the enemies and the other characters in the game. And if you're an actor that wants to work in motion capture, then this information is important because a bulk of the work in motion capture is for video game mechanics. But for this video, we are going to focus on locomotion. All the movements that come from moving the analog stick and nothing else. And to kick the video off, we're going to start with the most important thing to know and understand as an actor, the idle. What is the idle? Idle is when you leave the control pad by itself and the character is just standing there neutral in the base form. That position is where all the moves will start from and return back to. So it's very important that you as an actor understand the position and understand that once you find this idol and it is agreed upon the production, you must remember it like taking a snapshot picture. For some characters, especially non-human characters, you may need to emphasize the breath. So for us to see the breathing on the character in the data, you may have to exaggerate it a lot more just so it's able to be seen and used. A simple tip you can use to show the physicality of the breath, something I use myself and what you can see the actor here doing, is when you breathe in, raise your shoulders very slightly and come up off your knees very slightly and when you breathe out release the shoulders and release the knees now what it should look like is that the breath is creating this physicality rather than you consciously making the decision to do so with the other body parts idle break Idle breaks is when the character that you're playing is in the idle and breaks away from the idle for a couple of seconds and then returns back to idle. It's basically just to shake things up a bit and not have the character just standing there into oblivion. Now, idle breaks can consist of different type of movement depending on the character and they're normally just really generic, which could be things such as checking a weapon, turning the head left and right, looking at the hands, to change in the facial expressions. Now we normally never move from our position, meaning we don't really take steps forward and then return backwards. Normally everything when we do in our idle break is in that same position and we mostly just use our upper body to create the idle break. Walk cycle. If you're a gamer, then you know that a character can walk forever especially in open world games where a character can just walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. Now as actors, we're never going to be in a space where we can just walk endlessly. So what we do, we create walk cycles that are loopable. Loopable meaning that the walk that we do for the character is able to be in short terms copy and paste. To create a walk cycle, the first thing you need to do is start in your idle. From your idle, you will walk in a straight line and then at the end of the walk, you will return to the idle. Remember, you want to make it as generic as possible. When I mean generic, this means not too many fidgeting and different types of movement with the body while walking that is not loopable and able to repeat. You can still give your character a personality and all different types of styles with the walk. You just have to remember, whatever you do within those first four steps, you should be able to do again every four steps until you return back to your idol. Depending on how realistic the production wants to make the game, you might be doing different levels of speed when it comes to the walk cycle as well as the jog. Now, the same rule applies, regardless of the speed, regardless if there is a jog, you start in the idle and you end in the idle. Run cycle. Following the same rules for the walk cycle, you have to start in the idle and end in the idle when it comes to the run cycles. But remember, when we run fast as human beings, we might take these petty little steps before we come to a stop. 
for game mechanics, you have to take out these little steps that you might make. So therefore, you have to be able to do the run at a particular speed and come to a hard stop ending in the idle where it still looks good for the game. Directional turns. To enable the character to move in different directions, left and right and backwards, we need to do turns on the spot to create the movement of the character turning. What this is, is you start in your idle, as always, and you turn to the left 90 degrees. You would then return back to your idle. You would also turn right 90 degrees, return back to your idle. You will also turn left 180 and turn right 180. And always remembering starting in your idle and ending in your idle in character. The movement required for turning is quite simple. When you are turning 90 degrees, you only need to use two movements, meaning your foot turns and your body turns, and the other foot just returns back to the placement of the idol. When turning 180, some people can do it in two movements, but I say it's better to do it in three movements, meaning use the first two movements to turn your body completely around, and the last movement of your foot is to place yourself back in the correct idol position. Another thing to mention is that you are most likely going to be required to look in the direction first before turning your body. Now I must mention that there are a few games that when you move the analog stick to the left or right, the character strafes. Strafing is when the character's head is facing in one direction and the body moves in another direction to the left or the right. This may be something that you have to do for your character's normal locomotion, but because most games usually use this as a part of the active idol when the character is in a combat state facing towards the enemy being focused on them, I am not including it in this video and will include it in a combat video where I talk about the locomotion needed for combat. Now we have come to the end of part one. And today you learned about locomotion, locomotion for a gameplay character, meaning you are playing as the character and all the movements that was discussed today is from only moving the analog stick and not pressing any other button. In part two, we will start talking about active idols and delivering combos. Until then, peace out and thank you for watching.